So will Signals be the React killer where SolidJS and maybe QuickJS as well for a place completely react and take the lead? Well, let's find out. So if you haven't heard about the whole debate that was going on between React and Signals and the whole front end kind of community was debating about the new Signals sort of technique where it allows to basically like manage state the same way you do with use state, but more efficiently and, and like super optimized and super fast and performance. And there's been like people everywhere on Twitter, everywhere literally talking about signals and what is good about signals and bad about signals and all the creepy stuff that goes behind it and compared to React, obviously. So in this video, I'm going to look into what is exactly signals, why are super important, why they made this huge mess in the front end word lately, and are they better than React or are they like the React killer? Well, to start off, let's first see what signals are. So if you're not familiar with signals, if you never used or heard about signals before that, let me just tell you a quick story. So when SolidJS was invented, which is a library, the same as React, like a front end library that allows you to, you know, efficiently render UIs and manage the state and all those stuff, it has pretty much a lot of stuff that are shared with react like components and composition and gsx and stuff the only teeny tiny thing that this one it uses the real dom it doesn't use a virtual dom like react does and you would probably wonder oh how is that performance and the performance comes from the signals and in the past couple of like weeks months i already like started seeing some other frameworks and libraries like preact for example they were introducing signals the same way like soldiers does and all that kind of stuff and also we've seen new frameworks being brought to the table like the quick framework, which is sort of like a framework on a library. So it just like it's a big framework, but it includes a library inside of it that is the same as SolarJS or as React that allows you to do and render UIs efficiently and manage all the stuff and, and, and go on and so on and so forth. And interestingly enough, Quick also brought signals into the table and they're not using state or something, but QuickJS brought it in a different way or like an enhanced way compared to SolidJS. All right, so let's see what signals are and how they work compared to like the old Old React paradigm where you just pass in props and you re-render the whole tree if something changes and so on and so forth. So if you start with this one, signals allow you to manage state the same way you would do with use state. So basically just like you can imagine it as use state where you have like a function to set state and another variable to get the current state value. That's the simple thing. Now I have actually two implementations. I'm going to go through the SolidJS and the QuickJS signals. So for SolidJS in here, which is the original implementation of signals, this actually follows a reactive flow. You can search about more of like what is a reactive flow to see more in details but this is actually where only components that have access to the signal state will be updated so if you have like a big huge components tree only the components that actually access the signal and use the signal solely will be updated other components they're not going to be updated even though like the state is shared and actually being held in in the top parent of all of these child components this is actually what's going to happen and this is more like a two-way data binding because right now the data is not flowing unidirectional it's just more of like it only picks up and updates one thing it is more of like subscription bait cool now when it comes to quickjs actually it also has signals it pretty much the same as solidjs ink signals but i love the quickjs implementation because it actually fixes the issues about solidjs that makes it a little bit kind of ugly and in my opinion so here it follows the same reactive flow but with some improvement where instead of only updating the values on the gsx tree the dom itself it does a whole re-render of the component only the component that uses a signal so now it still actually actually picks up only the component that uses signal, but instead of only updating those small values without re-rendering, QuickJS actually does re-render. And obviously when it comes to React, it actually does re-rendering the whole tree starting from the parent that owns the state into down there. And this is actually the unidirectional data flow. So to imagine signals in here, we just to take this quick example. So for example, in here we got, this is actually our page. We got like a component inside of it called parent component one, and we got three children and like three child components we got child component one two and three so let's imagine this parent component one has a state called counter which is just being held in that component itself whether it's a signal or use state pretty much the same thing just mark this as a state and we actually trigger or let's just go for example and for example only child component two needs and has access to state so through props we pass in the counter to child component two and child component one and three they don't need access to it so let's say for example oh counter one is going to be having a state change so 
we're going to increment the counter on the parent component. The parent component in here for signals, all it's going to do is going to go, oh, CO. Counter in here is only being used by chunk component two. So I'm only going to update that component and I'm not going to touch the other components that are not using it, which means it's not going to do a re render. It's only going to do a subscription base. It's going to go th straight through into that particular component that uses that state towards that signal and update it right away. Now, if you compare this to React state in here, if you actually do the counter plus one and you actually do the state change, the whole React tree is going to be re rendered. It's all chunk components are updated and re rendered, even though they don't have or access to the props counter stuff or they don't need to access to that. Just the fact that the state is being held by the parent component that is parent of all these chunk components, all the tree is going to be re rendered. So, for a basic example of how signals work, for example, in here we got a solid JS application. So, this project here is bootstrapped and created using SolidJS. And this is actually a basic component. So, we got like a basic application. All it does, it renders this basic child component in here. That's all it does, just says, I'm a child, and it takes props, which has the name, and it all it does, and it's just going to set the name. So, for signals, what we do, we use the create signal, which is kind of a, like a hook, the same way you do with like use states and you just give it like, a, you know, initialization in here. And when it gets you back, it gets you a name and it gets you a setter function. Now the name in here is an accessory. It's not exactly a property, but it's actually a function that you need to call whenever you want to get the value. And this is how signals work to make sure they know exactly where you're calling this so they can do the subscription so they can like make sure you have your values updated at the right time. So all we're doing in here, I'm just doing name. So I have to do a function. And also whenever I pass the name in here, I have to call this as a function in order to be able to pass in the value and render it. And the same thing in here goes as well when like whenever this changes I do set name and assembles that and this is a basic example so all we do in here just like whenever you put something it changes immediately and those what signals are and if you compare this to into a react js application which is pretty much the same thing in here and if you look into the end result in here for the basic application it pretty much works the same thing for a simple example so because there has been some debate on this particular article of like react versus signals 10 years later with like you know ryan the creator of solid js and and dan he's contributed Computer to react. So to make sure we get the same example, I actually try to copy the same example they were using in here and actually try to use it again to see exactly what's the problem with SolidJS versus React and what SolidJS is solving and what is not solving and all that kind of stuff. So for example, in here, we've got a simple application. All it does in here, it has an input. You input the number of videos you want to list in here. And as soon as you, this input changes in here, it's going to re-render the new videos and it's going to put your videos. For example, it changes to four or if it changes to five, it just like shows you that number of videos and stuff like that. So this is the React application or react implementation of that particular project where you got like a simple you know input in here just to have the number of videos and got a video list so you got the number of videos in here which is a state that is put in top in here it passes to the video list now the video list in here just gets passed it just goes through the videos and it renders all the videos in here and before doing that it just like has a noun which is the same as the article in here so noun in here if the count is greater than one it just does videos versus video and all it's doing is just basically some controlling the flow and doing them if statement to know exactly what type of text to put depending on the, the type of props and videos that are being received and stuff like that, which works absolutely fine because React has this render unidirectional rendering and it just like renders everything when needed and it just like re-renders everything when needed. So it works absolutely fine. Now for the SolidJS implementation of this one and how it works, we got the same thing, but in here we got two kind of examples. One, which is the first one, that is the bad example that whenever you change this one, it's not going to update. And the second one is the good implementation and the good example. So let's try this one. So for example, I'm going to change to four. As you see here, here it changes to four and it works absolutely fine. But the first one, it doesn't. Even though the videos are changing, right? The videos are working fine. They change to four videos and stuff. They render four videos. But the text on top in here is not changing compared to this text while it's changing. Why is that? And this goes back to the implementation of how SolidJS actually renders because it doesn't do a re-render. And it kind of like has issues between the initialization and the rendering process or the update process. Is. So Dan in here, in his comment in here, it just states, this is actually the working version for this to work. Basically, you need to wrap your stuff in an actual function that returns the value. And you have to access this through props. You can't do, you know, destructuring, like do const and destruct the props. That won't work in SolidJS. You have to access it through props. So the subscription node, you're actually accessing that particular value and you 
have to wrap this through functions and calling the functions later on. Otherwise, it won't update for you. And that's what I'm doing here. For example, for the bad implementation, I'm just using this straight away as I do for Reacts, where you have just like some, you know, destructuring the props, you do count, you do videos length in here. Even if you do use the props dot videos directly without destructuring the props, it's still gonna have issues. But for the good implementation in here to make that it works, I pretty much use the same comments or the answer from Dan in here and the fix from Dan. So what it does in here, you have to wrap this to a function, you have to use props to access it. And kind of like controlling the flow now becomes a little bit harder because look at this, you have to call the function every single time you can't control the flow as you would do with this implementation It's just like an if statement and here you just it's a little bit cumbersome. And you're gonna have to make sure you're calling that particular function in here every single time, or you can't just use a normal value. And as Dan says in here, he even wants to add a little bit more logic into the count in here and do an if statement, it's just going to become as hell in here and just not going to work. It's actually working version in react. And this is how we would look like in solid look at that so many logic just to do a small thing in react compared to this piece of code so the issue with solid JS in here you have to group your things in the new control flow on the values themselves and you can't actually rely on the control flow itself that's why this one is not updating it's not updating the text in here even though like when you click on it it just you know the videos are going to be updated and everything but the text in here is not updated because it's part of that control flow it's part of that if statement and controlling it before doing the actual rendering or before going inside of the GS. Well, for the good version, yes, it does update. It just puts that as seven videos and it renders the seven videos. It works just fine because those are wrapped around the values and now the using functions and function gets executed every. So that makes the solid JS's implementation of signals double sword, where it's good from one side that allows it to only update once and not update so many things. And on the other hand, you pretty much are just breaking some laws in programming, especially JavaScript, and making the code a little bit harder to read and controlling the flow specific. Now, if you build and implement the same example using QuickJS this time, which uses signal, but actually has a different implementation of signals compared to SolidJS. So for example, here, the first one is the bad approach, which is in, in SolidJS doesn't work. And the second one is the good approach. Now, if you try to change, it's clear that both approaches actually work. So it doesn't matter how you write your code, or whether it's through values or control flow, or however you want to write it, it just works fine. And it's clear in here, this is actually supposedly to be the bad one, and this is actually the good one, but they both work in QuickJS because because QuickJS actually re-renders the whole component that is subscribed instead of only updating the specific values inside of the GSX, which SolidJS does. So to better understand how QuickJS actually works and how the re-rendering process of a QuickJS goes behind the scenes with signals, I tried to build this simple example where you have like a basic application and all it does, it renders two childs and it has an input in here to change like, you know, a text value. And there is this child component, the first one, which accesses the name, which is a signal that is going to be passed through props and it only does in here, it does the some control flow. So it does like, oh, new name equals I am just like some concatenation, not an actual control flow itself, then it renders that new name. But for the second child components, it doesn't know about that name prop, it doesn't know about the signal, it doesn't need to access it at all. So for this, I'm doing use signal, which is a little bit different than solar GS, which gives you the setter and the getter at the same time, all you have to do is just do name value. And this would just, you know, trigger the setter, and it would work fine. So let's try to change this one to something like, oh, I want to change the input to Jack in here. And once that changing actually happened, all it's gonna do is gonna do re-rendering of the child component. And that is it. The first child component, but not the second child component. This is actually the second child component. It doesn't need that. It doesn't access it. It doesn't need it at all. So it's all actually doing, it's all re-rendering. It's re-rendering the first one, which has access to this one. And matter of fact, it's actually re-rendering the whole component itself. And it's actually pretty smart. So if you don't want to use this new name, let's say, and you only want to use name directly, it's gonna automatically tell you, oh, you're not accessing this out of GSX. So it's only going to update the GSX is going to make it even faster. So if you go back in here and change this to, for example, let me just clear that out to go Jack and put that one as clear as the console log that I put in here is not even triggered. And it's even the name in here is being updated. Awesome. So yeah, so I think QuickJS actually fixes the issue of SolidJS like signals and it uses signals the perfect way. And QuickJS is an absolutely beast of a framework for a slash library. I really, really love it. So anyway, guys, thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed. I really advise you go ahead and take a look on both SolidJS and Quick and how signals actually work. They are super interesting.